I wonder what made this change happen. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about YouTube reversing its opinion about denying election results. Now, a lot of channels who questioned the results in 2020, they said Trump won and Biden didn't get 81 million and it was ballot harvesting and the election was rigged. People who said that back then, a lot of their channels got nuked off the platform. They received strikes. They got all kind of kickback from not only YouTube, but all social media, but especially on the YouTubes. Now, YouTube.com will not have that same policy going forward. They're going to allow you to question the results, maybe even deny the results. Now, there's an article we're going to get through that has more from YouTube itself. But my question right away is, why are they changing this right now? Is there a particular reason? Are they trying to get prepared for something in 2024? I think they are. And before I go any further into it, let's get into the article. Y'all know how I do. This article will be available in the description box if you want to read it for yourself without my commentary. But we're on Axios.com right now, and you see the headline, Scoop, YouTube reverses misinformation policy to allow U.S. election denialism. That's a very loaded headline, in my humble opinion, because when you're talking about quote-unquote denialism, it's not just Donald Trump talking about the election was rigged and it was stolen. It's not just him. Because I remember back in 2016, a certain somebody said that they didn't lose the election either by the name of Hillary Clinton. Yes, she did say that it was stolen. The Russians interfered. Matter of fact, there was a whole impeachment process over the Russian Federation interfering with the 2016 election, helping Trump win, which was a nothing burger. There was no evidence of this. Okay, they're talking about, oh, it was a hacker in Russia, all this and that and the third ridiculous stuff. And the same thing, Stacey Abrams over in Georgia, she got stomped in the wine, curb stomped by Brian Kemp, not once but twice, and worse, the second time. But the first time she said, oh, I didn't lose, it was stolen, it was rigged, all this and that, and the third. When they say it, it's no problem, it's all good, but when we say it, it's an issue. So I think now they're going to just even the playing field, I suppose, to allow people on the right to deny the elections, the same as those on the left. I don't know, but I digress. Let's get into the article and see exactly what's going on. So in a reversal of its election integrity policy, YouTube will leave up content that says fraud, errors, or glitches occurred in a 2020 presidential election and other U.S. elections the company confirmed to Axios Friday. Now, can we pause right here? If your channel was nuked or you got a strike or something like that, are they going to rescind those strikes? So, for example... If there was a video uploaded recently of Trump or somebody else, quote unquote, denying the election, same thing, uh, Curry Lake out there in Arizona, and your channel was affected, you have a strike on your channel right now that's still there, will that strike be rescinded? If your channel was completely banned because you got a three strike from that situation, will your channel come back? That's what I want to know. Are there going to be any kind of retroactive changes? OK, rather than just allowing content to be up that questions the election that comes forth after this point. Let's continue. Why it matters. YouTube established a policy in December 2020. OK, right after the election. Very interesting timing and not before then. Hmm. After enough states had certified the 2020 election results. Now, the company said in a statement, leaving the policy in place may have the effect of quote, curtailing political speech without meaningfully reducing the risk of violence or other real world harm, unquote. Okay, um, are you trying to reference January 6th that happened after the December 20, 2020 uh, policy came into effect? A lot of gaslighting going on, but I think they're trying to get ready for their side because what's going to happen is when we take the White House back, there's going to be a bunch of clamoring from the other side talking about it was stolen the same way they did in 2016. So if they have the policy up, then it will affect them. And then it's going to look crazy because why, why aren't you going to block them? But you blocked us. Also, this could be up because they want to demoralize us as Americans, not just on the on left or the right. Because when you say that the election is stolen and is rigged, the effect that has is 
to reduce the number of people that go to vote. If Trump or anybody else talks about the election being stolen, it's rigged, it's fake, and it's fraudulent, you're going to have fewer voters from that particular side come out to vote, which will bode well for the other side, meaning it'll hurt us on the right and help them on the left. I'm, I'm trying to think a little bit deeper to see why they would do a thing like this. Let's keep on going here. Two years, tens of thousands of video removals, tens of thousands of video removals, and one election cycle later, we recognize it was time to reevaluate the effects of this policy in today's changed landscape, YouTube said in a statement. How has the landscape changed? That's what I want to know. With that in mind, and with 2024 campaigns well underway, we will start removing content that advances false claims that widespread fraud, errors, or glitches occurred in the 2020 and other past U.S. presidential elections. Yes, but as how YouTube was specifically able to make that determination, a spokesperson pointed to Axios to their statement. YouTube said that it carefully deliberated this change, but didn't provide further examples of what factors or instances it considered when weighing its decision, but we all kind of know what's going on. I kind of just went through it right now. I gave you a quick rundown right now, and I think that I'm correct in my assertion. Let's keep on rocking. The platform said it will provide more details about its approach to 2024 election in the months to come. So during the cycle, they're going to see who's in it, and they're going to determine their policy based upon who's running. Okay, if Trump's running, one policy. If he's not, different policy, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Could I be wrong? Sure. But am I wrong? I doubt it. Details, the policy which will take effect Friday doesn't change, which is what yesterday, right? Doesn't change YouTube's other misinformation rules. The rest of our election misinformation policies remain in place, including those that disallow content aiming to mislead voters about the time, place, means, or eligibility requirements for voting. Yeah, I mean, I think that is correct to um, curtail that kind of content to say, oh, you could vote on this time, but you can't. To, to deliberately mislead somebody and then making them do a thing that will hurt them. Like to, to deny their ability to vote. All right. So I, I understand that point of view. Um, false claims that could materially discourage voting, including those disputing the validity of voting by mail and content that encourages others to interfere with democratic processes. YouTube said, I understand that part too, because like I was saying, it's, it's actually kind of good right here. I'm not really mad at YouTube for this because a lot of stuff where people say, oh, don't do this, don't do that. What it does is it just demoralizes people and they won't go out there and vote. And that's a way for the opposing side to gain victory. And I wouldn't be surprised, as we saw in 2020, if you had um, bad actors from the other side that would come in and do stuff like that to discourage us so their side gets the upper hand. Um, I just read something about 100 Antifa members being locked up because of January 6th. Is that true or not? I'm not really sure. But what I do know is that Antifa was out there in D.C. at that time because I was in D.C. in, I think, November of 2020, right before January 6th. I was there in November 2020, and I saw Antifa out there. They were most certainly out there. They appeared to be setting up camp, getting ready for the inauguration. So I'm sure they were out there during that time posing as so-called Trump supporters to interfere in the process and make us look bad. And the same thing could happen again. Elections are very important. They're very consequential. So I wouldn't doubt that they'd be out there trying to spread misinformation and or to do anything they could in their power to make us lose. So keep on going here. The big picture, media companies and tech platforms are wrestling with how to balance curbing misinformation with freedom of speech ahead of the 2024 election. I mean, you could do what Twitter does, which is, you know, community notes, add further context. Same thing I do. Whenever I do a video about my opinion or news or whatever, I write an article and I give you all the sources. You could check it out in the description box below this video. I write an article for this video and then provide my sources from left, right, independent, agnostic. That's the way it should be. You know, that is a good way to handle quote unquote mis misinformation but at the same time, allowing people to get their point of view out there. Finding the right balance has so far proven difficult. Former President Donald Trump and other elected officials have made election denialism a key tenet of their political platforms ahead of the 2024 election. CNN, for example, received widespread criticism for its town hall interview with Trump last month. 
Trump repeatedly pushed unproven conspiracies about 2020 election being rigged during that event, despite the moderator's best attempts to fact check him in real time. I mean, at the end of the day, what are you going to do? If I have my opinion about what's going on, let me share my opinion. Now, you want to add an addendum, you want to add a little note to it, then feel free to have at it, but I'm going to still get my point of view out there. All right, so that's that. Uh, YouTube will no longer enforce, or the policy will not be there anymore. You can say that the election was stolen, it was rigged, and it's totally fine. And I think, ultimately, there could be one of two reasons, as I close, why this is happening. The first reason is because they are preparing for the left to lose in 2024, and they're going to say it was stolen the same way they said it was stolen in 2016, the same way Stacey Abrams said that she got robbed in 2018, not in 2022 when she got cursed on by Brian Kemp, but in 2018 when she lost the first time. Oh, I didn't lose. I'm really the governor, all this, that, and the third. So they're getting ready for that. But they're also maybe trying to prepare to allow a lot of so-called conservative people to talk about how rigged it is and how it's no hope in order to demoralize us so the other side goes out there and votes more than us so they can win that way. So either two of those are probably the reason why this is happening right now today. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's the reason why this is happening? Is it because they want to demoralize us? Is it because they want to just uh, get themselves ready to protect themselves so they don't appear to be hypocrites when they don't block the left for denying the election, but they blocked us? As I said, plenty of channels have been nuked off the platform. They don't exist anymore because of, quote unquote, 2020 conspiracy theories. A lot of videos have been taken down. Matter of fact, I got a warning on my channel right now. There's a warning on my channel right now. Not a strike, but a warning. And it's related to the whole 2020 thing. So YouTube.com, take the warning off my channel since you reversed the policy. huh? Just go ahead and do that. That'll help me out tremendously. But whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.